So the next thing we're going to get into is let's kind of take a look at, at the site survey process. And to me, when I'm going to do a site survey on an opening, there's a lot of things I'm going to be looking for. In this application right here, I can see a door and, and I can tell right off, right off the bat that it's unhealthy. And that's critical to us because anytime you're going to look at taking something from a mechanical format to an electrified format, you need to look at the overall health of the opening as it sits. That's the beginning of everything because we always want to work with a healthy opening. When we're looking at the opening, we're going to understand a lot of different things that play factors in the role of, of an opening and how it's going to work and how it's going to function. Overall health, environmental issues, environmental issues that might include the winter, you know, cold, wet, damp, you know, what type of material is it going to be? Wood is going to react different to the cold and the moisture than something that's going to be metal. Okay, how about the sun? In Arizona here, we have to deal with the beating down sun. Um, basically from mid-June to the end of, end, end of August, September time frame, the western side of our buildings, they get so hot and the metal will heat up and it causes them to swell, which create different problems for us. We need to be aware of environmental issues, overall health of the opening, because oftentimes you're also maybe going to have to deal with preload, the preload pressure. Preload pressure is oftentimes when a door becomes unhealthy and you've got excessive heating or excessive air conditioning blowing, it's going to try and blow, the, the pressure is going to blow the, the door towards the out position, which may put additional pressure on the latch against the strike plate, which is on the frame. So we have preload potential we need to deal with. The other thing that's coming, that's becoming more common is the International Building Code Energy Code standards. And I get a lot of calls from individuals who call me up and say, hey, I've got a preload pressure against my, my latch and my strike right now. What's the problem? And I kind of want to walk there and understand what's happening. And they said, well, I had to add weather stripping around it. Um, they had to add weather stripping around the door and the frame to close it up and seal it up because they're having issues with you know, air conditioning escaping or heating escaping. And that is something a code official can look at and say, hey, you need to repair your opening. Um, but it can create additional issues on electrified hardware. So being aware of the small changes that can happen within a building from seasonally between adding something for protection or adding something to reduce the airflow, which is leaving a building, the weather stripping can create a lot of different problems. So the overall health is critical to us and we need to know and understand that when we're selecting the electrified hardware for an opening. So when we're doing a site survey, I like to ask the question oftentimes in my class as I instruct is, when you're going to do a site survey, what are some of the most important tools you take to the job site when you're going to do a site survey? What are we looking for? Because we're going to come and we're going to come across all kinds of different scenarios. Here I have a, um, a decorative wallpaper that I'm going to find on a, on, on a wall and we're going to run across something like this and it's like, what do I need to know about this? I'm not only looking at, when I'm doing a site survey, I'm not only looking at the door, the frame, the hardware on it, but I'm also looking at the surroundings because I'm looking at how does the technician get a wire to that opening? If I can't get a wire to it, then do I have to know and understand my wireless options that may come along with it? I've got a decorative wall covering here. What is behind it is one of my most critical questions I always ask. And, and to find that out, the most important tools I always tell everybody are your knuckles. You know, sitting out there and knocking on something. You know, I want to listen, what's behind the wall? Is that drywall glued to brick? Is it glued to a tilt-up wall? Or do, is it furred out? So it's furred out so I can get my wires behind it. By knocking on it, I can also tell how heavily insulated it is. Is it insulated at all? It's completely hollow or is it heavily insulated? Because we're also going to come across um, soundproof rooms or heavy to medium insulation that we have to be aware of. How do I get a wire down through there? Knock it on my frame. Is that frame filled with cement? If it's filled with cement, I need to take a hammer drill or make sure my technician takes a hammer drill with them to the job site. So it's, we want to understand what are we working with? Think in the mindset of the technician, what is it going to take to get wire out to that, that frame, out to that opening? Am I going to get a wire to the lock side of the door? Am I going to get a wire to the hinge side of the opening? A lot of information we're looking at when we're looking at frames and understanding the basics of frames and how they're put together. What might be sitting behind that frame? Do I just have drywall? Do I have an open cavity sitting back there? Is it going to be filled up with cement? You know, based on certain types of applications, if I've got to add a certain type of strike, 
I may need to really kind of pay attention to that. If I'm working in a heavy envir uh, industrial environment, um, heavy, heavy industrial, um, potential high hazard areas, um, hazmat type of areas I may deal with, I may look at going to a Folger Adams electric strike, which has on the back side of it the solenoid sitting on the exterior of the strike. I need to understand how it's going to fit in the frame. I need to understand if it's filled with mortar or cement up inside there, I'm going to need my hammer drill to create a pocket in there. You know, getting wires to that area is important. So it's a lot of things we're understanding when we're doing our site survey, gathering information that goes back to our estimators because it's about time and labor that's going to go into it, taking the right tools to the project site when they go out there to do the installation. So I'm going to kind of run you through a couple of different scenarios here. We're going to kind of look at, we're going to look at existing hardware. You know, what type of hardware do I have? Lengths of latches. I'm going to look at different options for electric strikes. And obviously we're going to talk about, does it have a potential rating to it? So as we get started here, I got a simple cylindrical lock set. Cylindrical lock set comes in different types. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. And we're also going to talk about the the functionality of the lock set is just as important. Is it a passageway lock set or is it a classroom style? What type of lock set do we have? From there, we can start looking at what type of electric strike do we want to use? I'm going to look at the hardware. I'm going to look at the length of the latch. You know, does it have a dead latch function in it? And we'll talk a little bit about that later on if you're not familiar with a dead latch or a guard latch or a guard bolt. Those are common terms that will, you know, they may be different in different parts of the country. So finding the right strike and then finding out, do I need to have something that is rated? If you look up on the screen up in here, inside my electric strike, I've got a label within the strike that explains that electric strike is rated. It has a fire rating up to three hours. So we're asking important questions when we're doing our site surveys. And oftentimes we're not asking it, we're looking, we're looking at the door, we're looking at the frame, and we'll talk a little bit more about fire ratings as we continue through here. So we're gathering information. What is the hardware on the door? What type of door? What type of frame? We're going to come back to that again, so we're not going to run away from it. What type of frame is it on? Aluminum. What type of hardware is it? This is an exit bar across the door. This one happens to be an Adams Rate 8800 bar across the door. We have strikes that are designed to work with it. You know, sometimes we can electrify the bar. Sometimes we're going to look at putting an electric strike on the frame. Here again, if you've been in my classes before, we talk about site survey and the skill set of the technicians that are going to do the work. Identifying your options. What type of hardware do I have? What type of strikes do we have available for the option? You know, do we require a standard, any type of a rating to it? Not only do we have fire rating, but we also have windstorm standard ratings. If you're along the Gulf of Mexico, all the way up the Atlantic seaboard, you're going to have to deal with windstorm standards. So we have different products that fit your needs. You know, understanding what you're looking at. Here I've got a different type of hardware. I've got a door. This, is, uh, this door in particular happens to have a fire rated exit device on it. So it's fire rated. That gives me a good indication. I need to look a little bit further. What type of rating might be involved on that door in the frame? Is the door fire rated? Is the frame fire rated? Is it part of a fire rated assembly, which we'll talk about as we continue through here a little bit more. Finding the strike that will work with it. I've got a Pullman latch with a dead latch on it. Do I have a strike that's going to work with it? Okay, does that strike have to be fire rated? Here again, paying attention to the detail. The detail on the frame, paying attention to the detail on the door and the existing hardware there. So we need to know in our sense we're selecting the proper hardware. And oftentimes you may often sometimes get involved in new construction as well. New construction as well is just as important because we don't want to walk away for an opportunity for business, but we're going to look at the project in a different manner. We need to really get into and understand drawings and we need to read spec sheets. Division 8 is where we commonly find existing mechanical hardware where we're normally going to find it at. You can often um, sometimes now find electrified hardware also in Division 8. So years ago I, I worked with, I, I was fortunate enough, I got to work with a locksmith and they showed me how to look for the information I needed to look for to determine, you know, how do I take something from a mechanical format into an electrical format? Division 8 hardware, standard mechanical hardware, sometimes electrified hardware. You know, what do I have existing? Off of that existing mechanical hardware, I start looking at my options, but I also have to look at the frame and the door. Is it part of a fire rate assembly? 
Can I get wires to the hinge? Can I get wires to the lock side of the door? Where am I at? Where am I at in the world? You know, Western, uh, Western United States, we're getting pretty hot nowadays. Um, as we get hot, we know that frames will get hot, they'll expand. We're gonna have potential for preload. If I'm working new construction, I know this in advance. I'm gonna start looking at my hardware I'm gonna select based on, you know, the application. I may have a building that's you know, 300 feet long. I've got an east-facing building and I got the west-facing side of it. The west-facing side, I need to pay attention to that. It, in the Sunday afternoon in Arizona, that the west, western-facing side of the building, it's going to heat up. I'm going to have expanding metal. I'm going to potentially have a preload pressure issue on my electrified hardware. That's a consideration for my hardware options. What am I going to look for when it comes to particular parts and pieces? We have with the HES 7000 and also with the Adams Right products that have preload pressure. They can handle up to so many pounds of preload pressure against it and still open up. And it, let me explain preload pressure in a different way. So if you've ever gone to a door and, and the door handle is hard to turn and you sometimes got to push that door in or pull it out to relieve pressure on the strike plate and then you can turn it. The pressure on that strike plate is called um, preload pressure. So it's the pressure of the latch against the strike plate. It's so strong that we cannot release the strike plate. So you gotta remove the pressure by pushing the door in and out and then turning it allows it to release. Okay. Let's continue on here. Here I've got an existing facility. Looking at the opening, doing my site survey. What type of, of wall, frame, door, hardware, what is on the existing open? These are all critical items. Can I get electricity to the hinge side? Can I get electric electricity to the latching side of it? Which pieces of hardware can I use um, different strikes with? Where's my environment? Where am I at? If I'm in Toronto, Canada, there I've got to look at, I get extreme cold and I also get extreme moisture. Okay, I might get the preload pressure against it. Here again, find the proper strike that will fit and work with the application is critical. If I know I'm going to have preload issues, especially when I'm doing the site survey, this is an existing building, existing facility, I have preload pressure. It helps to guide me towards the strike I'm going to be using. So in understanding existing hardware, understanding environmental conditions, health of an opening, critical.